Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Paul Muller. And you're giving a DevOps keynote while we're here at Discover. And I'm wondering if you could hit on some of the high points that you're going to go over there. Yeah, well, De DevOps is an interesting topic because, of course, and you and I have been talking about it now probably for, what, four years, I think. Um, but it's interesting. It's, it's really reached a point of mass interest in the marketplace. So this year, um, we've got a DevOps pavilion set up you know, deliberately to help people understand what this is. Uh, and the talk is for me is a lot about just helping people, I guess, understand you know, why DevOps, why now, uh, and what are some of the transformation processes people need to go through. Why is it taking people this long to come around to the idea of DevOps? You know, it's a good question. I ask myself that question every day. Um, I don't know about your experience, but I think one of the bigger ha's for people now is, is that software is really an integral part of what it is they deliver to their customers. Um, whether you're you know, running a website, whether you're producing um, a car, I mean, we, know we recently heard about cars that now get software upgrades to change the behavior of the product. Uh, whether it's the kiosk uh, at the airport that is the first thing your customers see. Software mediates and differentiates so much of the experience now. And I think business executives are impatient for change. They're all sitting there going, when can I get my new feature out to my customers? Uh, and I think the other part of it is that the risk of getting a project wrong now is so great. Uh, both in terms of quality, cost, and did I get the right features out there, um, that a different approach is needed from the old waterfall approach. So how are people approaching it differently? Because I mean, I mean, the, the DevOps cycle doesn't fit with kind of what the traditional enterprise IT software lifecycle tends to be. It's a good point, and I think there's a couple of changes. I mean, there's obviously the technology part of it's one, so automation is a really big component of getting a DevOps uh, platform ready. So automating things like, well, like DevOps is all about reduction of, of, of um, bottlenecks or constraints. Uh, and one of the big constraints for a lot of people is, you know, am I testing my applications, especially if you're iterating using Agile every night? Testing's expensive. Uh, so just simply the process of automating regression testing so that there's no excuse not to test um, is probably the number one thing we recommend people do. And, and that's a really pragmatic, high value first step. Um, but then setting up concepts like infrastructure as code. So your developers aren't sitting there waiting for platforms to be built. They're able to instantiate platforms through automation or better still through API calls to get what it is they need. Uh, and then, you know, more broadly, understanding where the bottlenecks are in the development process overall. You know, do we have the right number of developers? Are they in the right places doing the right things? Um, Security is another big bottleneck that people need to look at. So identification and subordination of those bottlenecks is the big thing that people are doing right now. So once you get past the bottlenecks, what are some of the inherent risks of moving to a DevOps model for people who have traditionally not done it? So this is the big thing, and I think there's a couple that you need to be mindful of. The first is that, uh, you know, I had one um, situation recently where um, uh, an organization said to me, oh, you know, we're looking for people with experience running, you know, $50 million, Dev $50 million DevOps transformation projects. And my point to them was, by asking the question, it kind of, you're almost setting yourself up for failure that way because most DevOps um, projects work best when you identify a product team and you realign that product team around that initiative. So it's one of the key things. First thing is just make sure you're, you're doing it the right way. Uh, the second thing that you need to be focusing on is uh, ensuring that uh, in the process of making all those changes, people are coming along for the ride. And thinking like a product manager is a really big change a lot of people need to go through. You're no longer running you know, ops or dev, you're, running, you're responsible for that end-to-end -end product. And that's a huge um, uh, mindset shift that a lot of people don't, unfortunately, make. So that's probably one of, that's, I'd say that the biggest risk is your people. Aren't people always the biggest risk? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think in this particular case, it's probably more so because um, you can lull yourself into a false sense of security. My, a friend of mine coined the, the, the phrase, um, process is a fetish, right? It's like you can say, well, you know, we've got our agile processes, we've got all of our automation tools, tick, 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 and you can forget about the really important part, which is it actually boils down to people changing the way they work. Now, as you're talking to enterprises about this kind of transformation, you're not, I assume, not going in and saying, move everything to a DevOps model. It's, is this a more of a pick a project, try it out, and then pick another project and try it out? Or, or are you really saying, holistically, blow everything up and start uh, you know, doing software differently? In my wildest dreams, we'd blow everything up, right? Um, no, I think, uh, you know, we'll talk about this a little later, I think, but I th ultimately, most organizations need to be able to support what they're doing today and um, innovate these new processes. And so for me, it's really about picking a product that makes sense for it. I mean, I've seen great success in, for example, environments that are rapidly changing, things like the web, uh, things like your mobile applications. 
they're all examples of areas where a DevOps approach is typically really successful because the value is so high. And there are other environments where, you know, let's just say, say, take core banking, where a DevOps approach is not necessarily going to yield as great a benefit because the rate of change isn't simply high enough to justify the investment. How is, how is HP applying DevOps to the way it does software development? Oh, well, you can find out tomorrow when you come to our keynote. Um, now, we've actually got HP IT. I don't know if you had the opportunity to check them out here, but uh, we've been uh, pioneering DevOps approaches inside our organization now, um, really in earnest for the last couple of years. So if you look at products like, say, Service, um, uh, service Anywhere, which is our service management help desk product, uh, and um, a lot of our new SaaS-based technologies, they're iterating those products on a really rapid basis and they're using the DevOps approach to minimize the quantum of change, um, to maximize velocity of new features to the market and allowing us to experiment with, this, with the idea of you know, what features the customers really want. Uh, also HPIT is applying it internal to HP. Uh, so we're using it to, as part of the transformation process to really help us accelerate our customers' experience and also our employees' experience of IT services. And that's a, a really radical change because, of course, you know, you imagine we've built up 75 years worth of quite interesting, um, you know, legacies are, 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 are kind of a bit of a... Uh, that's a lot of technical debt. It's a, bi yeah, it's a biased term, legacy, because someone once said to me, legacies, is, it was whatever works, right? Um, but um, in our case, you know, we've got to, we've got to make sure that we, we transform the business without breaking it. And uh, so there's a lot of work to do. Um, but we're doing some really interesting stuff and there's a great case study in fact that uh, is available online as a white paper we can send about what we're doing internally. All right, well I'll see if I can uh, link that in the uh, video comments. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you the we'll get you the notes on that. All right. Thanks Paul. Thanks.